Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Trom Yuan Shao Let's Play. We continue for episode 2 from turn 2 in the autumn season of 190. So, last time we just got things rolling, checked out a lot of the changes from the Trom mod itself, and we're just going to continue fighting in the north. We're going to take some of these Han territories. Tianfeng is here. Now, technically, he worked for us. He was a very outspoken advisor. Uh, eventually, that got him into trouble. Uh, but early on in this period, he was actually the one who came up with the strategy to take down Gong Sun Zan. Uh, we will have that to deal with a bit later, uh, depend on how we handle the dilemma with Han Fu. The important thing is Zhang He is on the field. Now Zhang He is someone we would like to have, Xing Ping is someone we would like to have as well. Han Fu will get just from the fact that he's the faction leader. And Xun Yu will come along as well. So basically when we absorb them, if we have the army slots available, we would be able to take all their armies on the field. And that's what we're looking forward to. In the meantime, we need that seven battles to get our cheap recruitment of uh, our captain retinues, and then we'll be pumping them out real fast. This siege battle, however, will not be easy. Hmm. They didn't change the garrison units, although Bu Chu Spearmen is new. Unless they're just glorified. No, they're not spear guards because they don't have turtle. Interesting. I wonder if turtle still grants 100%. Hmm. We could spend some time to siege it, or we could just take this instead. What else is lucrative around us? It's all farmlands. One, two, three, four. Literally four farmlands around us. This would grant us the most cash. I guess that's why we would siege this and force them out into a field fight. We probably don't want to add any generals. Xun Yu might be the only thing we might consider because we can get siege weapons and that would save us a turn of holding out the siege. Oh, these got changed too. Our spear guard's just gone from the game. Curious about that as well. Now, price-wise, upkeep of 700 for these units. Oh, definitely a discount. Or do they actually add each one individually? 145. There's a lot of new changes I need to basically process in my head. 580 for these, 180 for these. So we're at 760 already. And then he's 100. So it's actually a small discount. Probably just from this. So it's actually true to cost. And then we can basically lower using this. Makes sense. Um, I don't really want to spend more money here. So I think we'll just go. No candidates have appeared. We could use the Chancellor eventually. Once our peasantry income actually reach a certain level. Now let's speed them up. Yep, we're going to have to build some sort of siege engine if they don't come out. They're giving us a superior force, which is good to know, even though we're outnumbered heavily, but mostly really, really poor units, and the strategists definitely can't really fight us. Ah, I like his background title, Fourth Right Advisor. Pretty much what got him in trouble, advising in Guangzhou. Um, what would we want? We'd probably just sap, because it's probably going to take longer than two turns for him to decide to come out. Should we also try Demand Surrender? Hmm, did not work. No problem. The only thing we might want to worry about is the potential for Huang Shao to come bother us. We are quite exposed over here. We're just going to have to gamble. I don't know how AI behaves in this mod. That's too small. That's pretty much it. We're going to wait for reforms. We're not going to spend any of the points. We have an open core position, but not interested. How far are we from this? 13 points of prestige. Okay. That might be the only reason why we might pursue this building chain. Give us a little prestige boost early on. Obviously, lineage helps, but um, aside from that, it's quite expensive to go for this building. State Workshop's definitely the correct choice. 
Anyhow, let's continue. We did fix the floating heads. Uh, there was one mod missing. It's all listed in the description below in the order that you need to have them loaded. So just go check that out if you want to play with a similar setup as this game here. All right, we finished our first building. Your economy grows, kicks in. We need to use our money that we've been saving these three turns to build, build, build. Um, the increase of units and the bonus here will be used when we need to expand this army. Probably another captain. Once we get to maybe the five battle area, we'll feel more comfortable adding another group. So we're going to get that state workshop in very quickly. And we'll probably upgrade this last. We could do another slot. We have the food to sustain it. That way we get one more building slot. And that building slot will probably be government support. Trying to see how we can time the build order to make sense. Because we only have three turns of this and we can't queue up multiple things. I guess this is a decent building. Upkeep per turn feels kind of bad. We get public order 12% from peasantry. It's not a big number. Reserve capacity doesn't feel very strong. Then again, this doesn't feel very strong either. Upkeep is 10 at the end. So that's acceptable. Okay, we'll worry about this when that time comes. They're not surrendering. Five turns. We're just going to queue up another thing. They are attritioning right away, which is good. Maybe they will come out and fight us soon. Let's continue here. We also tiered up in terms of our lineage, so there's more upgrades available for our units. But I'm not entirely sure we want to upgrade these early groups because unless we overflow because once we rank up to a certain point oh Sun Jian dies on turn what this is really quick turn four wow okay I mean we do have the force event trigger going on so that might be why we finally have some characters Zhang Hong Chen Gong let's take a look at them no employment history no employment history so they're both clean if we want them we can definitely grab them it's going to cost us 10 lineage, which is relatively cheap. Approacher. Oh, the subtext is change. Lead the fight, encourage and support. That is new. Workforce also. I guess we'll take a look out here. We're not recruiting him. I'm just curious about the bandit abilities being shifted and changed. Can target if generals. So once again, all these splash damage attacks feels like they only hit generals now. So it doesn't influence the unit balance. We're definitely not grabbing him. Don't trust the fact that he came from Tsao Tsao. But just wanted to check out the, the skill tree here. Surplus market is definitely a useful one. She's rank four, so it's going to be impossible to keep her happy. Also comes from another faction. There are a lot of new abilities that we got to get used to. What about you two? What abilities do you have? Analyze weakness stays. Can target if general. Okay, makes sense. But um, given how the numbers shifted in the game, this is Pretty good, I want to say. Frontline observation, having some force sighting and uh, visibility range increase. Nothing too fancy there. Have the same restore heal. I guess the cool thing is we start with this. What is this? Unlock metal units. Hidden spear assault unit. Wow. He has a unique unit. Now I kind of want him. What's so special about him? Increased speed, increased range resistance for 30 seconds. He has stock. So literally a hidden spear charging to the enemy back line. Decent charge, given how the charge has been nerfed on a lot of cavalry units. Melee attack rate, base damage, very high. 
This is very high base damage. 41 armor piercing, 30 base. Melee hit bonus. Doesn't decrease the enemy evasion by a lot. And almost have no armor. So they're glass cannon offensive unit. Okay. I, mean, I can dig that. It's very good to know. Unlocks unit metal unit. So you also can recruit purple units. That's my guess. 3% character salary faction wide. He's going to save us money. And he's going to have 50% corruption faction wide if he's prime minister error or faction leader. Ah. Huh. I like this. Okay, so we might grab him. The Jung Hoon get a lot of change as well here. So that's the same. Restore, disturb. If missile attack is possible, we drop their range damage. We drop their accuracy, which is a background figure. I don't know if they, they're listing it here in the mod, but there's definitely an accuracy figure for all range units in the background. Domboric. Two Jong is put here. It's been buffed. 10% range, 25% melee attack rate, and 6% melee evasion. But we would also need Zhang Zhao to make this work. 10% corruption reduction if he's administrator. 5% trade influence faction wide passively. Okay. Does not have a special unit. Also need a pair to make things work. He does have a fondness for Sun Jian's faction, so it's kind of strange for him to come join us. Willing to spy, he was a good diplomat historically. Yeah, Chen Gong is going to get recruited here. Spend our lineage points on him a little bit, that's fine. We get 5 points at least passively from just having the faction leader on the field. Redeployment cost discount or one more. We're going to take a one more assignment, I think. I don't really care about the faction support. This income is nice. But the thing is, there's a very good chance very, very good chance that he's not going to be my heir in the future. Why does he have a gray horse? He's a commander here. There's a very good chance that if we get Zanba, we adopt him. So that we can get mercenary discounts. Ooh, we start with this one here. Get some peasantry income going, sure. Not exactly what I'm looking for. We could upgrade the tax building higher, but... Um, Probably not the most important. I think we start with the trade agreement here. It's no longer locked behind school buildings. Oh, they're all no longer locked behind buildings. So that labor building really could go because it's not locked. Uh, I guess that's, that's an interesting approach. Not sure if I agree with that. It's annoying, but um, it's a balance. We get more than one? We get more than one per season? That's also in very interesting. Okay, I'll take two trade routes. Thank you very much. So we get two reform per year. I have five excess food. So we're going to give him at least one. And ask for some cash in return. Uh, it's it's 64. We overclicked. It can't be 65, unfortunately. Yeah. Nope. Even though the air might carry some items, it's definitely a, a thing we could consider. Yeah, he cares about his daughter. Good father. Can't really trade anything. Nope. None of this is positive. We'll just take the deal. I could also give them some food, especially if we think about what might happen with us event wise. Hmm, not even slightly positive. Too poor to pay us. Yeah, then maybe not.
The thing is, we can only queue up one building at a time, and we only have two more turns left, so it's like, whatever we do. Ooh, local construction costs decrease. Good for us. Whatever we do, it's not really going to work out that well. I kind of want to increase the replenishment rate. I mean, even the, the Mustangs play better in the beginning. Yeah, they'll need some levels. I'm curious to see... So he unlocked his Militia Law Axemen here. Earth units, Hidden Assault units. Yeah, we haven't checked out a lot of these special units. Look at that damage. And then there's a bonus against infantry as well. Very good hit rate. Also very low armor. Because they're a hidden unit once again. Hmm. Gotta check out these on the bottom. There's Buchu Mounted Archers at Tier 3. Now this is a different unit than the standard Horse Archer. No special abilities, just better stats I'm assuming here. Mostly base damage. He doesn't have any special units. Mostly armor piercing, expendable militia. So basically, they're just heavy hitting militia units they can set up to charge. We'll probably bring him out for that in the future. He's most likely joining the main army. So we're not going to have him do any assignments. Uh, kill off some population growth. We are, what, plus 14k? So we slow it down a little. I want the mustering per turn. also want to give him some experience. When we start recruiting things, mustering is going to be more effective than replenishment. Minus 2k population growth. Yeah, sure. Can we wrap up this fight here? Mm, he's not coming out. And we can't get a delegate here. I don't want to actually assault the city, not with this army composition, so... A continued siege it is. A bit unfortunate. Um, I think the only logical thing we can do here is either upgrade the farm, which gives us a better garrison. I guess it's worth it. And then spend the money to get us another slot. Yeah, that's pretty much all we can do here. Got the diplomacy done. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. It's gonna stay with us at least for seven battles. We have 101 points. We spent all of it here. If there's another recruit we want to get, we can get it in two turns. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. Now they're healing. Hmm, I think that's worth it. Let's continue here. Now they can technically leave. It's a port city. We're also running out of supplies. I guess eventually we probably just fight them. They're never coming out at this point. Give me a ram. When we run out of supplies, we gotta go. Alright, this is our last turn of spending money on buildings. We want to pop this up. And that's pretty much it. I don't 
think she's coming onto the field. This does not give Unbreakable anymore. That is a big change. But probably a fair one as well. Hmm. We'll grab that. I think that's probably the more useful one. And anyone else willing to do any trades or any deals? No, our diplomacy standing is just dropping here. We need to get stronger. Tianfeng is standing in our way. We will not pay for this. He left. That's actually what we were waiting for. Now we can just force the issue. Probably the delegate was going to go in our favor, even with him there. Oh, Jomin. Does not have art. Also does not have a unique background. Interesting. But did get a special unit. Interesting how they decide these things between the different mods. Alright, we will not actually be fighting this. Um, why are we getting medium casualty here? I mean, we're still fighting into a wall, but I can do better than this. There's going to be sections of the wall that are broken with towers down as well from the double sap. The wall should be like around 70%. So we should be able to force our fight without taking tower damage. I mean, with the overhaul being shifted towards unit focus, I wonder how they deal with the tower damage because that's a very unfair component as well. Yeah, these sections are all wrecked. Oh, tower's still up though. Hmm. We'll probably fight here. They're spread really thin. I know we're still trying to get kills on him, but it's probably not the time or place to do it. 40%. What's this at? What? 68? It's not very high. This is the highest, but we can't move in this. Oh. We just do this. Right, technically we're at 97% with this setup. And all the towers should be shooting. Okay, we can just maybe put ourselves here. We'll just go through this side then. All right, that way we have someone who's tanking it. And then we're just going to go for it. He has a 77%. Mm. I don't think we need to put him out there. I mean, we could. 77 is not bad. He also could shoot, right? That's like another major advantage. He can't really make a difference there. And then we just charge in with our cavalry. Or maybe flood in with our infantry first. Something like that. Actually, we can ignore the ones in the back. Oh, 
We didn't capture it? Oh, it's just really slow. Uh, it's fine. We'll just be really slow. Wait, why are we not listening? Keep going in. Alright, I think we can set up for a rear charge soon. From the behind. Get those spears. Look at that. The hammer coming from behind your own city. Alright, we captured this. Let's move back. He actually didn't take any damage. Or the heal. The heal ticked in at the end, which is pretty much what happened. Here, can we go disrupt this guy? Because I can't really get through all these. All right, now we have to do the difficult thing. They didn't take that much damage, but we'll leave them there. Traversing in the city is the difficult part of the game. I don't believe we have to mess with um, this group there. We do have to capture these points so they don't actually keep shooting us as we chase. Yeah, tower's still very broken. First capture it. They're pulling us to where all these towers. I feel like I'm getting kited inside the city. But like I don't see a better solution. We should be able to capture that just by walking through it. Alright, army loss kicks in. We get ourselves a... Uh, slight ca like casualty? I don't know. It feels a little medium-ish. Like, for certain units. Entirely tower damage, for the most part. The militia got killed by these spears in the beginning, but overall, not bad, not bad. We also ranked up. Okay, let's see what we got. Army slots, trade agreements. We already got a few trade agreements. We need some administrators. Let's bump this up. Did they change the bonus, the milestone bonus? Slightly. Slightly. There, there are slight shifts here, I think. Because remember, I remember this one was giving plus 10 food at the end. And I think the character salary discount was also not 12%, but like 15%. I mean, this, we need spies, too. We're going to get two spies and two administrators. It's okay. We'll rank up pretty fast. Not going to be a big issue. Uh, we did get our third battles so that we have now 10% recruitment cost discount. We aborted this mission. Okay, that's fine. Because we ranked up ahead of time, I think. We're going to add Trungul into this army, even if they don't get along. I think it's... It's not really an option here. We need a strategist of some sort, and he's the more interesting one here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to make sieging a lot easier. This is the Hidden Spear Assault Unit. I wonder how many we can get. As many as we want. Okay, cool. No trebuchets. Oh. And this is our unique unit added in. No trebuchets at all in the game. It's not something you unlock. No. Wait, there are trebuchets for flaming shot. Is 
Is it locked behind a reform? All the unit symbols are... Oh, there, there's still unit symbol for dragon units. Wait, that is not Azor Dragon. There's a different art for Azor Dragon. It's now using a trident. Okay, Yellow Dragon looks the same. J Dragon looks the same. I mean, they're the only unit unlock symbols. Like, the Saber unlock is gone too. How do I get my Siege Weapons? Huh. Unless it's like a unit tier unlock and we need like the tier three to recruit tier three units. But like he only has tier one and we can recruit tier two units. Wait, I can also recruit multi bolt crossbow. Because it's half commander, half strategist, the, the color on the unit. Oh. That changes things. Like, do we actually need Chen Gong here then? We just wasted some money summoning him, but I don't mind if we just have to get rid of him. I would have to delete this unit though. We don't need this unit. Um, it's nice, but I I, I don't think we want to deal with it right now. Then I might just get more captains. We have a 10% discount, might as well use it. Uh, we have a cavalry one here. Feels like we should just go for the cheaper option. Either the Jian infantry with some axe bu chu. Sabres. Two militia archer. The full archer comp is actually more expensive. We do lack range in this army, so... We could go for that option. We have frontline infantry. We don't have a lot of assault. What can we recruit? Wu Chu Ji infantry. Wu Chu spear. Probably gonna get a couple of these. Hmm. Porcupine crossbowmen also look pretty good. So we are going to get some range units up here. We can get rid of maybe some of these. Hmm. I mean, there's no raw answers. I think we just go with the cheap one for now. If we don't like it, we can always shift it. They can double as frontline and assault infantry, whereas this is more or less just kind of two of each, where both all four of these can be doubled. And then we also have these. I'm gonna grab these. And over here, we're gonna grab some siege weapons just to make it easier for us to assault cities without waiting. Symbolically, I think we just get one. We probably pick up one of these, pick up one of these for fun. This is unique, but this is not really unique. We have the cavalries here, so we're going to get rid of this guy here. Wait, what is this symbol? Oh, unit list. Huh, interesting. We're, we're completely out of cash, so we're not going to be able to shift him to another unit here. Wait, con congestion. Congestion? I'm going to get rid of him just because the upkeep is being paid. We don't need to pay that upkeep for now. It's very expensive. Not a fan of this guy because his range is too low. Whereas this is definitely very good. This is not so much. We haven't been able to really utilize him because his range is so low. It's 
I'm going to get rid of him as well. I'm going to modify this a little bit. All right, we just pumped our money into the units. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah. Um, technically, this is not fine. We should probably use a tax collection here just for income purposes. So let's demolish that. The good news about having tax buildings cost something is that when we demolish, we actually get something back. We'll be working towards this once our units rest up. Speaking of that... Cancel that. So we're going to shift the assignment here for increased replenishment. I mean, he's never going to join us, but um, not really historical. Oh, Yuan Xi has art. Okay. Through wisdom, defeat Han Fu. So I think we'll get the event here. Yeah, we can confederate him now. This follows history. We basically write a letter to Gong Sun Zan, who's also thinking about attacking Han Fu. Um, the entire story goes like this. Han Fu is the local prefect. Yuan Shao is just the administrator of Bohai, which is not where we start in the game, but historically, we are just the administrator of Bohai. We were given the job by Dong Zhuo as sort of this olive branch, where he didn't want the warlords to rebel against him, so he gave them all these jobs on the recommendation of two of his advisors. It really backfired, because now all these regional powers, the administrators, are still going to unite against him, and he's just given them all these titles. So he eventually killed those two advisors. But that's not the point of our story. Our story is that when we were put in Bohai, our boss, the prefect of the province, Han Fu was told by Dong Zhuo to keep an eye on us to make sure that we don't rebel. But when the trend of seeing so many of these gentry clan warlords are rebelling against Dong Zhuo, Han Fu kind of swayed himself into joining. And he started supplying a lot of the food because he had the administrative control over this very big breadbasket province, the Zi province. And after the war sort of died down because none of the warlords were taking action against Dong Zhuo aggressively, no one wanted to lose their army first. Everyone kind of went back because there was a big swarm of Black Mountain bandits in the north and they had to take care of that. Han Fu also went back and Han Fu became this man without a large army. Uh, he had a decent sized army, but they were just not often used and he wasn't very comfortable as a military man. Uh, but he had a lot of food and that made him a big target for everyone around him, including Yuan Shao and Gong Sun Zan. Because when you are increasing your army, Everyone is just conscripting from, you know, farms. And the one thing that's kind of restricting you from expanding your army is how much food supply that you have, right? You can't convince them to come work for you if you don't feed them. So Han Fu, with all the food, became this juicy target everyone wanted a piece of. Yuan Shao wanted to take this, uh, but the advisors he was talking to were saying that we have this better plan. We know that Gong Sun Zan also wants to take this. So we basically write a letter to Gong Sun Zan telling him that let's work together. Let's split Han Fu's land. We attack from the, you attack from the north, we attack from the south, we wipe them out, we share the food. Gong Sun Zan, very happy to get this letter, agrees and start going to war. Well, Yuan Shao is not doing anything. So Han Fu is only feeling an attack from the north. And at this point, Han Fu is going like, well, Yuan Shao's clan is really prestigious. And he's someone that maybe I can trust. So we're just going to join him. And he's going to protect us from Gong Sun Zan. Even though we're the one who set up this attack in the first place. So we happily accept his confederation offer. We take control of him. We give him sort of this empty job. Uh, a general title without any troops. We take the land. Obviously Gong Sun Zan is extremely pissed off at us. Which is why we're going to war with him. Because we said we were going to split. But the moment he attacked, we just absorbed them. And then we basically said, you know, offers off the table. We get a couple armies. We get a 
a couple pieces of land and we're now at war. And we also finish our mission. We have to take care of our economy now because we have too many armies on the field. Ju Shuo, okay. Also someone who worked for us. Xin Ping as well. Zhang He we picked up. Yeah, very happy with the group that we picked up here. We are very exposed to attack from the north, but we're going to quickly finish up our fight in the south. We're just going to empty out these armies. We don't need them to be here. We have to also take a look at what exactly we got from the generals with all the changes to the game. We're not exactly sure. We're trying to recruit that. We're going to need some replenishment boost. We'll grab that. Hmm, it's level three already. I guess we don't tear it down. We tear this down though. Not gonna have any sort of commerce income whatsoever here. Right, we're supposed to be in Bohai. But we're just gonna fight our way down the coast. We'll take this, take this, take this, take Bohai, take this, and then we'll be touching Gong Sun Zan, we'll be fighting him then. Anfu has the empty lunch pail, which is Xun, Yu, uh, Xun, uh, Xun Yu's item. Uh, he obviously doesn't have this now. Uh, he will get this in the future by uh, Cao Cao as a gift. Um, basically, it's a it's a box meant to hold lunch, and if it's empty, it means it's a vessel not serving its purpose. And it was symbol given to him to tell him that he is no longer needed and that he should commit suicide essentially um, and not force Cao Cao to kill him uh, because they're really good friends. Xun Yu and Cao Cao has been together since the beginning and Xun Yu, unlike Cao Cao, was a Han loyalist and he believed that Cao Cao was also a Han loyalist and everything that they're working together is towards restoring the Han. But it became pretty apparent as Cao Cao gained more power that Cao Cao is there to usurp the Han. And when Cao Cao wanted to name himself the Duke of Wei, Xun Yu was against it. Uh, at the time, Cao Cao was one of the Grand Excellency positions. He abolished one of the positions and then named himself the other. And he also gave Xun Yu sort of the assistant title right under. So he was kind of Zhong Shu Sheng. He was in charge of dealing with the courts between the Imperial Court and the Grand Excellency Office. So he was sort of the left-hand man of Cao Cao, and Cao Cao wanted to promote him to a Grand Excellency position. And the reason why that was symbolizing Cao Cao was looking to become the Duke of Wei was because if Cao Cao elevates him, that means Cao Cao will get elevated again. But if you elevate above Grand Excellencies, there's technically no position for you so he was going for one of those, you know, lord titles. He was going for a duke title, eventually a king title. Uh, and Xun Yu kind of snuffed that out. So he was very against his own promotion in a stance to prevent Cao Cao from promoting himself again, if that makes any sense. And because of that, Cao Cao kind of knew uh, what his stance is on the future of their cooperation together because Cao Cao obviously is moving towards usurpation and in one of these campaigns where Cao Cao went out to attack Sun Quan at the time, an eastern campaign, uh, he was marching towards Guangling, he summoned Xun Yu from the capital to visit the, the, the army camp, which was really odd. It, that's kind of a historical tip-off that Cao Cao actually forced his death because historically it's written down that he got sick on this campaign and then passed away. Uh, the weird thing is Xun Yu is the guy that Cao Cao keeps in the capital when he's away on campaign. That's just the way it's always been. Cao Cao goes out to fight Tao Tian, Xun Yu is at home. When Lu Bu came attack, Xun Yu helped defend. When Cao Cao went to go to Guan Du to attack or to defend against Yuan Shao, Xun Yu was in the capital in charge. He was sort of uh, Cao Cao's foil. You know, Cao Cao goes out to war, he stays at home, take care of all the logistics, take care of the court. But for this weird campaign where Cao Cao didn't even end up fighting Sun Quan, he just marched down. He summoned him to go to the army camp. And there, he died. And it's called, you know, 
he got sick and died. Uh, but in romance, it's said that he got this gift, the empty lunch pail, and then died uh, by suicide. And that's actually probably closer to what happened historically, uh, just because the order of events just doesn't make sense. You have to realize history is written by whoever is in charge, and Cao Cao is in charge of the courts. So when they write down that record, you know, Xu Yu dies of uh, sickness on the campaign trail. Even though the fact that he's on the campaign trail already tips it off that it's an odd thing. And obviously he steals the item because he's a faction leader, not realizing it hurts his satisfaction, which doesn't matter until now because he didn't have a satisfaction until now. Um, we're just going to remove this. It's a very negative item. We can maybe trade it. Maybe trade it back to Tal Tal before we kill him. Would be fun. Uh, let's get rid of the horse. This is a item that we probably will use. Uh, we did open up a couple administrator slots and we didn't use them yet. We'll have to figure out who we want to put them in uh, and where. Um, these will take a little bit of time, but uh, we did get all these guys. Let's just quickly look at what other items we picked up. Fancy comes of age, does not have anything special. My gosh, it's bad. I mean, familial conflict is not as good as it was before, but still decent, I guess. Okay, he has his weapon. Oh, we just got two items, that's it. I kind of want this movement. And then we want this to encourage. Yep. So we're going to go this way. Oh, these are also shifted. We haven't paid attention to this at all. Hmm. Okay. More things to consider. I'm sure one of them are going to be decent for administrators. Because we have a lot of food, like, peasantry-based locations. Well, agriculture development is actually super useful for assignment. For green buildings. Uh, not so much. He has no desire. We can use him quite a lot. Voice of Reason, we have too many of those, Forthright Advisor, and so forth. There is the Burnt Trait, which still gives 10% to all source. There's another 4% to all source from his Cunning. Public Order from Authority. Garrison replenishment. Okay. I'm thinking of firing her. Hanful's daughter. We have these new positions for next season as well. Hanful's wife. Also probably have to go. Got to cut cost. So let's see. Hanfu, Hanfu's daughter. And yeah, we're just gonna release her. Not gonna banish anyone. Hanfu's wife, who I think is also quite useless. Uh, as a matter of fact, really useless. Hanfu's son has the other item. He has the farmer trait, so he's going to stay. 
We don't need two, technically, but uh, it doesn't hurt. He also has a bit of decreased desire, which makes him quite good to hold. Xingping might run into some problem. Binding Fury also can target of general. So basically, all damage spell is only general damage. Spear focus, very heavy spear focused. Okay. Ah, huh. different type of spear focus. It's interesting. Hmm. Uh, we're keeping a little bit too many generals, but. Maybe we can't help it. It's gonna kick in. No one hates us, right? So, no one hates us. I'm gonna recall them. Probably have to defend here. Like, we definitely want a second army. We can't really afford one, but uh, we want one. We're going to give the two units that we need. Mm, should we get another seed weapon? This army lacks range, so we're going to pick up another Porcupine Crossbowman, which looks pretty decent. The damage being heavily armor-piercing, firing rate's not great. But the range is really good, which I think is what really matters. And the ability we're looking at here gives even more range. Oh. Wait, why is there a three second cooldown? Why is there no duration? Curious to see how that works. Oh, that water looks so ugly. Uh, slightly better. Let's get rid of that. 300 upkeep. And I'll accept that. We have a little bit of crossbow damage here. And we can afford that army. That's okay. All right, so we'll just slightly build up our economy a bit. I think once we take Pingyuan and Bohai, it's going to be a little bit better. But that should be it for us right now. We really should cut some people. Like Han Tong historically doesn't make a lot of sense for us, but he does have better traits than Xingping, for example. But Xingping actually worked for us. We need to get rid of one of them. I think we keep him just because he has better traits. The royal trait. He's also starting off at a higher rank already. So we have more toys to play with. Indomitable warrior. If losing melee combat in a fight. Huh. Burning soul. He's going to be killing himself. Assemble overwhelming if winning if winning he gets a splash double range wait 50 percent extra range double power what is this okay Han Tong is staying right i mean he's ah uh, it's tough this is kind of fun too only when he's losing Basically, he, he's really strong and fights really hard in the beginning, but he starts losing health. And then this bonus kick in once he start quote-unquote losing. Uh, I guess we could afford both. Just curious to try out some of these stuff. Okay, this does not look good. I actually should just fire him. Like, as a, as a strategist, we have too many that we're not going to use. 
So even though historically Jushua did work for us. Yeah, yeah, let's let's be a little bit harsh here. Honestly, Sunyo should go as well. This probably protects us from losing Guandu. We have Chen Gong, we have Xun Yu. That's enough. Should have fired him earlier. Any any interesting abilities that might make us keep him? No. Okay. Yeah. So feel feel very good about this. All right. We just won the game here. The guy who told where Wu Chao is is now gone. Grand Commandant. Probably want to give it to someone who's mad. Wen Chou. Wen Chou and Yan Liang. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Let's go. He only gets four points of satisfaction? I guess his anger is not from desire for higher office. Or unless they nerf these posts where it's only four points. Oh, they only have four points of desire. Local infrastructure. Lack of purpose. They basically want to be on the field. We'll summon them out. We'll keep those posts empty until spring. Yeah. What about administrators? That can also fix them. Hmm. Construction cost disc uh, four percent. It's really low. Junior looks like the best with the income boost. Six percent construction cost discount from Zhang He. Hanfu looks decent. All right, I think we put Hanfu in wait because there's more food production there. The percentage would stack. Maybe Xun Yu in wait. No, Xun Yu in Henei. But there's more income sources in Henei, and there's still food. And Zhang He doesn't get the job. Okay, sounds good. I think that's all we need to do. Those two are on cooldowns. So we can't really assign them this turn. Um, I don't think we have anything else. Nope. All right, Deltran's triggered. Don't draw is going to die soon. We got our lineage point back. It's not hard to get lineage. We're going to have to rest up for our units. They will be ready very soon for the most part. Oh, that cavalry unit bounced back to full right away because they're on Captain Retinue. Right, so we're moving next turn. We, we don't have to worry about his health. It's fine. Perfect. The 10% really kicked in really well. That's not super great, but... We'll live with that. We're going to be ending our episode here. Uh, we'll come back next time. Sweep down the coast. Should be pretty quick. Should be probably just a lot of delegate battles, to be honest. Just a lot of garrisons. We might try these units out on the field just to give a feel. We still have to assign people to their proper positions. See if we have some waste and see if we should fire anyone for those waste. We also have spy positions available now. We'll keep an eye out. Obviously, the biggest target we're going for is going to be Tao Tian's general, uh, Zanba, who has a bonus for mercenary discounts. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for that. we got to get diplomatic vision of him first. So a couple more invasions and get some vision down here. We should be fine. So we'll continue from here next time. Until then, bye.